With the final chapters of Bear finished, the boys now turn their attention to the stars. But which romance will whisk them away to a faraway universe? Will it be the daring romance between space pirate and steamy ghost, or the exploration of time and love of a woman fused with a spaceship? Find out this week on The Gentleman's Romantic Book Nook. Welcome back, adoring fans, to another installment of The Gentleman's Romantic Book Nook, a journey into love in literature. I am your co-host, Lucky. And as always, here with you is Mac Money, broadcasting to you live from Portland, Oregon. Well, we finished our first book in our series. Um, what, what has been the response from our public, Mac? What, what have you felt from the, the audience after our first completion? Stunned silence, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Stunned silence is a perfect way to describe it. Um, I would say that we have we've built this base now. We've given them an expectation, and now we need to we need to shoot further than that. We need to um, go above and beyond. You know, really shoot for the moon, or maybe further. I do love a new dawn, and I do love a new day, a new chance to be. So you know, come on in, have a seat, maybe shake off what's worrying you for the next. 40, 45 minutes, and uh, let's talk about romance. Lucky you're taking us to space. Space, Mac, as we all know, is the final frontier. And what better place to set our next romance than somewhere that we've been pushing as a society for eons since we could look up into the sky? Now, let me ask you this, Lucky. Uh, and I think this is a question a lot of our listeners will have on their minds. What exactly is outer space? It's out there, man. Um, <laughs> outer space is what's not the Earth. Just everything else. Whoa. Uh, and there's no life in outer space, is there? Uh, that is ridiculous to assume. I think that what many of our authors today will explore is there is, in fact, life in outer space. And yes, it is sexy out there. <laughs> that was, was going to be my question. Are they sexy? <laughs> do they have holes? What are the holes like? How many holes do they have? Are they capable of love? I do want to preface all of that with, you know, I made very sure that this is animal-free selection with whatever it's going to be. Sure, there might be some animals. No one is romantically involved with them. Uh, so I think you might have touched on this in the, in the intro there, but uh, you have a couple of, couple of options for us. to A fork in the road, you might say, heading off in two equally romantic directions. Indeed. This is the first time that we've ever done a book where we're actually talking about two and then selecting one for the actual reading. So what I prepared for you today is the initial reaction and synopsis of two books. We're going to talk a little bit about them and select one. And then for the rest of the episode, we'll get into some of the nitty gritty details that I've uncovered in my research. Yeah, you're, I just imagine you like in the library basement. You've broken in because libraries aren't open and just like sheafing through things with tons of notes, leaf over pages. <laughs> You've looked up these authors. You found where they live. I have this uh, phrase horny enough with a bunch of question marks circled 10 to 15 times <laughs> for each book selection. Shaking your head as easy with a book, throwing it over your shoulder into the fire. Not horny enough. <laughs> Tossing it into the fire. I started in the basement of a library. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's going to be quite the adventure trying to figure out between these two since they are both books I desperately, desperately want to read. And I'm very curious to hear where... Uh, where you're going to land on these. Are you are you ready to hear the first selection? Lucky, uh, nothing would please me more. All right, I'm going to give you title, author, and then I'm going to, some would say dramatically, read kind of the synopsis that's been put <laughs> together from the sources I found online. Okay. The first book that we will be discussing and debating today is titled The Ship Who Sang by Anne McCaffrey. <laughs> so, sorry, did you say The Ship Who Sank? No, <laughs> No, that would be a different and better book. This is The Ship Who Sang uh, with a G, like a choir. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, The Ship Who Sang by Anne McCaffrey. Helva had been born a human, but only her brain had been saved. Saved to be schooled, programmed, and implanted into the sleek titanium body of an intergalactic scout ship. But first, she had to choose a human partner male or female, to start her exhilarating escapades in space. Oh, wow. Okay. 
that's this is tough because now I'm like I if there was like a button for which book to hit I would just be like mashing that one without <laughs> even hearing about the second one. Uh, there's a lot to unpack in just even that brief synopsis. Um, I agree. There's a, a few more lines. Oh um, God! Just there's yes, more? yes. Oh, there's a there's a little bit of a spattering just so you can get a little bit full um, story of what's going to happen here. Her life was to be rich and rewarding resplendent with daring adventures and endless excitement beyond the wildest dreams of mere mortals, gifted with the voice of an angel <laughs> and being virtually indestructible. Helva XH834 anticipated a sublime immortality. Then one day she fell in love. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's the synopsis. Oh my God. That yeah. in like of itself is like a great short story that you just read to me. The ship who sang. I like how it's a priority. It's, so it's a sleek, sexy ship that's immortal. But like their priority is like, and, but but can she sing? Who, who designed? <laughs> it was the Phantom of the Opera designing this ship. Sing for me. It's really meant for interstellar travel. My angel of music. <laughs> Are they teaching this brain that? I mean, that's that's what jumps out to me. It's a brain that got saved to be taught and then put into a robot. So it has this uh, concept of like how to live and what mortality is and the fact that they won't be mortal when they're in a ship. It just, that alone brings up this really interesting concept behind it. And I, then also <laughs> the fact that they are going to fall in love by choice. Yes. And it seems like there's some, like uh, the ship is sort of pansexual in that arena. It could, you mentioned it like man or woman, <laughs> boy or bear. Oh, wait, I like that. We're keeping our options open. I think for a, uh, for the ship, right? I don't want it to be locked down in gender stereotypes. We've hardly been heteronormative so far. <laughs> very true. And I don't want to start now. Uh, so <laughs> that's a very good selection. I, if that's your, if that's the one that you chose to tell me first, I like can't wait to hear about the second one. Do we want to talk more about this one or do I get, do we get to, do we get to hear both before we dive in? I, I don't want to go too far into it because I don't want to sell you on the first one without saying the second one. Because like I said, these are both very interesting books that I bet are going to be excellent reads. I'm like already sold. I feel like if a, if a man had come to my door and was like, hello, sir, do you, can I have a minute of your time? I'm like, hell no. And I start to close the door and he's like, oh man, falls in love with a spaceship. I'd be like, hmm? Maybe I got a little time. <laughs> he sticks his foot through the door and says, and there's a woman's brain in the ship. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> our second option on the table today is titled Gabriel's Ghost by Linnea Sinclair. After a decade of piloting interstellar patrol ships, former Captain Chazadea Bergren, one time pride of the Sixth Fleet, finds herself court martialed for a crime she didn't commit and shipped off to a remote prison planet from which no one ever escapes. But when she kills a brutal guard in an act of self-defense, someone even more dangerous emerges from the shadows. I like this because it doesn't immediately say romance, right? This is okay. very open-ended, like, okay, fantasy, science, pirate adventure. Here's where it takes a fun twist. <laughs> Gabriel Sullivan, alpha mercenary, smuggler, and rogue, is supposed to be dead. <laughs> Yet now this seductive ghost from Chaz's past is offering her a ticket to freedom for a price. Someone in the Empire is secretly breeding juckors, vicious and uncontrollable killing machines that have long been outlawed. Gabriel needs Chaz to help him stop the practice before it decimates Imperial space. The mission means putting their lives on the line, but the tensions that heat up between them may be the riskiest part of all. Uh, so... I have, I have a qualm with the last line of that because the, this, <laughs> this short synopsis is already established, like some sort of race of killing machines that's being produced. I think that's probably the riskiest part of the endeavor. I mean, but, your heartbreak can only lead to so much destruction. A, a race of like xenomorph-esque creatures is probably but worse. can a ghost's heart break? I think that is what is <laughs> they're trying to discover in this is, book. <laughs> is it a literal ghost? It is a literal ghost. So it's okay. a little bit it's a little bit <laughs> tough in the back covering, but this is a book oh, about breaks. a woman who is captured, put in prison, and then a ghost from her past shows up and helps -na 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 -na. <laughs> uh, When you said a ghost, he's a, a ghost from her past. That's I don't think anyone's ever used the phrase like ghost from her past or a ghost from decades gone and actually had it mean a literal g -g ghost. <laughs> And I think that's what excites me so much about it is we're looking into this book that's going to be, you know, while it reads very much like a fantasy story, there's a literal ghost she's going to be falling in love with as she's trying to figure out the empire and whatnot, what? the, the Jukors. 
that's a bonkers mashup of sci-fi and like a horror element. I feel like most of the time when you get like to the techno in storytelling, when you have that technological level of space, you're tr- typically not also having like a supernatural like element tied into it. Like with a ghost very, I think that's a little more rare in literature. So that I find that aspect very interesting. Mm-hmm. There's quite a few genres I think that are going to be blended in this um, epic as it were. Uh, I do want to mention too, before we get into the actual decision process between the two, both of these books are what are considered um, space operas. I don't know what that means in terms of like genre and the written word. However, that is kind of the style they're both in. Um, They are also both the beginning of series. Okay. So this could spark a lifelong love for... For our audience. I don't know what it's going to do to us. (laughs) Like certainly not us. Uh, what's funny is Gabriel's Ghost would also be a good title for like a Christian themed romance novel. <laughs> she has to let her husband's soul go to heaven so that she can love again. I do. You just said a phrase that I want to lock down for a future book. Christian romance. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Just in the future. I think that's something we're going to want to touch on. And just like good, just like a good like Christian music, I'm sure that there's some version of it that exists out there that would be good. I don't want to read those. I don't want to read that. that. Give me the most ridiculous ones. Uh, it's funny that there's. It's funny that you mentioned that there's space operas because I love a good space opera, and I feel like it's something that there's not like enough of. Sort of Star Wars is like the penultimate example of what a space opera would be, but these um, sound a little less uh, iconic. I don't. How popular are these? books each could you can you divulge that information to me because i i haven't heard of these books i'm hearing about each of these books for the first time now uh, so is there is there any like other background that i need to know in terms of popularity award winners or flops or, or yeah so i'm i'm kind of unveiling this information slowly based off of your questions because obviously i don't want to tip my hand on <laughs> which one i'm favoring between the two so the ship who sang was published in 1969 and okay. republished nice. again in 1985 um it is written by ann mccaffrey who is really famous for a lot of different books, specifically Dragon Riders of Pern, which yeah. is a huge fantasy series, indeed. I haven't read Dragon Riders, but I've heard of Anne. And it was funny because I, I I recognized the name. It rung a bell, but I thought, that can't be the same Anne McCaffrey. This doesn't sound like what I know to be true about Oh, them. it's the same one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously she's uh, won a lot of awards in her life for what she's written in the past. Um, this book specifically did not win an award. Um, the not yet. Not yet. It Maybe win, after uh, we the, review the, it. Yeah, the Mac Bonnie, uh Award for Best Science Fiction Romance Novel written in 1969. Uh, <laughs> we're still accepting submissions for that. It's a very small window to hit, but it's certainly there. Gabriel's Ghost, our second selection, was published in 2005. It won quite a few awards, though it was hard to lock down specifically which because it was blending with Linnea Sinclair's awards at the prestigious National Book Award, the RITA. Uh, she... Uh, Her name is synonymous with high action, emotionally intense, and character-driven novels, was a specific phrase I ran into multiple times (laughs) while uh, trying to do research. And she is the author that was most prolific in the sci-fi slash romance scene. I found about 10 books of hers that were all starts to maybe five to six length book novels. Okay, so we've kind Mm -hmm. of got like an older book that maybe laid some groundwork for the newer generation. Gabriel's Ghost is a newer book, heavily acclaimed. The Ship Who Sang, a little older. Not quite as much acclaim, but maybe in, in a little infamy, perhaps. The last thing I'd like to say about The Ship Who Sang is it is actually a collection of five short stories that Anne McCaffrey had writ- written about this story about Helva, oh. and then rewritten to mash all five stories together to be the fluid story about Helva, this scout ship, and what happens to her. That's interesting. So when it was originally released in 1969, um, I remember around then, I imagine it was sort of short stories written up until 69, and then published together, if I understand correctly. Then probably in the 80s, he said it was re-released in 85, was that, I'm assuming mm-hmm. that's when she rewrote it to be more of a novel. Yeah, it was 61 through 69, the first five short stories, and then in 85, that's when it was reworked to be the novel for the actual five put together for the Helva spaceship story. And if we... <laughs> And if we read this book, uh, we would be reading, I assume, the novel version? Mm-hmm. The okay. novel version has all five stories reworked together. So it is still called The Ship Who Sang. However, it is going to be the like penultimate story of Helva. <laughs> okay, what's I just want to write this down. Hel- <laughs> do you want her, do you want a robot name as well? Hel- yeah. Helva XH-834. 
Because when she went to get her name registered, they were like, we're sorry, Helva is taken. We <laughs> suggest XX Helva underscore 5423. <laughs> I mean, it could have been worse. It could have been Helva 1234 exclamation mark. So <laughs> that, that's her password to log into her <laughs> ship body. <laughs> her ship body. I like the concept that she deals with technological problems also as she is the ship. She can't log in and open up the fridge for whatever lover she picks. <laughs> She's like got new antivirus software downloading, just like can't get out of bed in the morning. And I'm very interested in this Gabriel's ghost option because I find that this could be what a sci-fi version of the movie Ghost would be, but probably a little bit more action packed. The action packed is exactly what is sort of I'm leaning a little towards when I lean towards Gabriel's ghost. I lean that way because it sounds like there's a little more action going on, whereas I think the ship who's saying is going to be maybe more of that romance. And I'm sure they both sound pretty. I mean, it's a woman who's trapped inside of a, of a giant, like immortal spaceship. So that doesn't sound boring. I'm not trying to say that. But OK, is there anything else you want to tell me? Is, do, so do I get to decide, like, is this my decision? Is this Max's choice? So I think that without explaining it specifically on the show, we've put up this program where you present me with a book, I present you with a book, our audience enjoys and reads along with us. I'm presenting you these two options as two books I desperately want okay. to read in the romance genre. I'd like you to pick what you're more interested in. Okay, all right. And remember, these books will keep existing after the choice. So really, <laughs> if it if it does kill you, we can go back and read them. I think both of these are going to be incredible options, and I know that... It is quite the choice. Which way are you leaning? Well, which book will Mac choose? The answer after these messages. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. You know, if you're enjoying the Gentleman's Romantic Book Nook, you probably want to uh, shoot us an email based on our choice. Uh, that email is uh, gr. No, it's not. It's no, it is. It's grbooknook at gmail.com. <laughs> Yeah, that email again is grbooknook at gmail.com. You can reach us on our Twitter. You can reach us on Instagram. We would love to hear some emails from you. If you want to be involved in the next selection of books, we were playing around with an idea to maybe open it up a little bit to get the audience involved. So send us which one you liked better. We'd love to hear if uh, maybe once you find out if you would have preferred the other selection. We want to hear from you. Shoot us an email. Now back to the show. Well, that was weird. <laughs> That was weird. What happened just then? Well, I'm not sure. You were, I, anyway, you were about, I'm pretty sure you were about to just announce to us what choice you had in your in your heart of hearts. I, after hearing about both books, I, they both sound really fun, but there's something about that woman. There's something about Helva, as they say, HX349. You heard it here first, folks. The Ship Who Sang will be the Gentleman Romantic Book Nook's second book selection. We are very excited to present this book to you. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of the other things that happened in this series. You know, I I was going to withhold from you the fact that this was five short stories because I think that was probably a tipping point. It's one of the most interesting facts about this book. However, a lot of the reviews I was reading was about the commentary that this book takes on ethical rights, like the morality of taking a brain from a child and putting it into a giant spaceship. Uh, the idea of like disabilities and the way that that is affecting people in the future to make this implanting into spaceships feasible. It's a very interesting concept that a lot of people were not happy with online. I think it's a very interesting commentary on like technology and how we sort of can like be lost in that. I mean, the, the, I think there's the future, there's a certain like realistic future in having uh, certain machines put into our bodies and hooking our bodies up to machines. Um, and for that to be like the premise of a novel or a series of short stories in 1969, I think is kind of impressive. Absolutely. I think it's a really interesting time, too, to be reading. You know, this this first short story started in 1961, and I think as we read it, we'll talk about when each one was originally published to just kind of try to get a sense of what was going on at the time. Um, this is a book that was published in America, so we'll be able to kind of track what was happening in the 60s <laughs> while these were being published. And that I think that was an interesting time. Like, oh, yeah. By the way, the book is in Chinese. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. Let me make a note. The Ship Who Sang and... Jeffrey. Perfect. Uh, how long is the book? So the book is actually um, about 258 pages. Cool. So not too much more than we were actually expecting or we read with Bear. We are going to be breaking this up into three overall readings since we'll be publishing three episodes for the book. It's going to be two short stories per reading. So while I don't know the specific ah. page numbers, we'll be reading two short stories as we go. The first reading that we'll be doing next week are the first two, The Ship Who Sang and 
the ship who mourned. So maybe a little bit of uh, foreshadowing there. Yeah, tell me that they all have the ship. It's all the ship who, the ship who went to Maui. Almost. There's one, <laughs> there's one called Dramatic Mission, which just kind of flows in there out of left field. The ship um, but then the rest of it is a teenage werewolf. <laughs> I could teen wolf one of these ships. That's a brand new sentence right there. Okay, great. Um, that sounds good to me. Uh, and I think that's going to do it for us. Did you have any additional thoughts on these books? Uh, no, I'm just very excited to take an adventure into space with you. I think that the selection that we've made is going to be incredibly interesting to see how this robo woman tiptoes around the minutia and stress of love with a mortal being. I got to say that that's a, qu- a query, a question that I've never even considered is what does this sh- what does a ship feel when it falls in love for a man? We all know what it's like to fall in love with a spaceship. I think that's indicative of what we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to it's ask these questions that nobody's hard, asked. The hard phallic shape of a shuttle. I mean, yes, I'm agreeing with you. Yes, we all agree that spaceships are phallic and sexual. But what I'm saying is I'm excited for the opportunity to feel that in the reverse. <laughs> Immerse yourself in the ship. I guess something I didn't really think about while I was picking these books were the specific sexual encounters, which I think was really, really major in Bear that we knew what was going to happen. And now I'm kind of thinking, is somebody going to go into like the engine room and start poking and prodding and like oil the engine incorrectly and that's going to work for the (laughs) ship? I mean, ship a drink first. And thus the cabin doors depressurize on another episode of The Gentleman's Romantic Book Nook. Get ready to strap in and go to outer space with us next week when we dive into an incredible journey into the stars. 